the main action was to remove these uh, publics from all state control offices and, and companies. Side by side with Jews, hundreds of other people were dismissed of their jobs in the various ministries, the police, security services, post services, railways, the National Phosphate Company, municipalities, and many other places. This act was not in Morocco at the Exploration, and in later historiography, and like uh, the Premier Exploration, to differentiate it from the parallel post issue purge. Following legislation, heads of the protectorate offices received clear instruction to purify their offices and the related companies by means of relieving from their job those belonging to the undesirable groups. The concerned individuals were identified through a rapid study of municipal police and security records, common knowledge, and through informing by other people. At the same time, following the special initiative of the Res resident general in Nogues, the directors were also urged to use the opportunity to sack people whose performances at work were bad. Thus, the pur purification targeted a, a very wide assortment of people who allegedly threatened the fringes, be it by their religion, their political thought, their sectarian affiliation, or their deficiencies in war. One of the problems in the application of these measures was that since some of the outlawed groups were at least partly secret, mainly free masonry, the administration could not target clearly its members. The solution for this was that simultaneously with the removal of those already identified, the entire body of thousands of workers and directors had to sign declaration of not belonging to a secret society. Thus, even if not effectively purifying all unwanted elements, since the act of signature is, not, is so simple, the entire workforce of the protectorate, from top to bottom, was put under suspicion, perpetually intimidated and acquiring a sense of self-surveillance. In regard of Freemasons and Communists, the quantitative dimension of the first purge is within the hundreds. Concerning the Jews, the scale notes that in December 1940, maybe you have other more accurate um, uh, data, um, in the 1940, 435 Jewish employees were fired from government offices, and that in 1941, 81 Jews were removed from administrative duties in Fes and Ujda. In light of this and additional information, I assume that the total number of Jews that were fired during the purge approached 1,000. The purification of society and other forms besides removing from workplaces. Simultaneously with acting against personnel at the workforce, there were many uh, deport deportation of non-French citizens from Morocco, among them many Spanish and Portuguese who have been reported as communists especially in connection with the Spanish Civil War. In addition, many foreigners and foreign refugees, uh, to talk about, Jews and others, were sent to Camp de Travailleurs Etrangers. Obviously, as well, the organization of society did not concern only purges and deportation, but also modifications in other domains. After the first round of purges ended, after the first round of purges ended, a large number of people thrown out of jobs tried to find its way back to work as the loss of incomes was extremely great for workers and the huge number of their dependents. This probably coincided with some practical need of needs of the state since certain sectors become less viable without the dismissed personnel. The request for reintegration in workplaces and for reconsideration of the status of third individual which mostly ended uh, unsuccessfully, appeared in a form of numerous petitions and letters sent to local officials, to the resident general, and, to, and even to the Marshal Pete himself. The purge, and in many cases the uh, spouse as well, brought in and negotiated their identities. The common explanatory motto in the letters was that they were misidentified as Jews, communists, Freemasons, etc., which in reality was not their case, or if it was, that was a past irrelevant and a much regretted mistake. They claimed to be truly committed to French values, 
and as such very French. The issue of what Frenchness is thus dominated the, the discourse. It was forcefully communicated by the, uh, by the administration and taken on by many of the uh, individuals who either ideologically had adhered to the new dictions or superficially accepted them in order to survive. Before the Shi, the ideas of Frenchness were summarized in the official motto of the Serb Republic, that we are not even taken in for the a pretend national revolution objected to these values and attempted to rehabilitate under the supreme authority of the Marshal the allegedly pre-revolutionary Christian ideal ideals of community in combination with the new motto that the fascist group Croix de Fer, of the fascist group Croix de Fer, Travail, Famille, Patrie. Beyond the latter slogan, the new discourse applied also to broader conceptualization as described by Kuman. And I quote, the true France was not the France of business and industry, but was the nation rooted in soil. It was not the France of egotistical individualism in which, uh, which touted individual rights as ultimate values, but the France that placed community over individuals and held work over profitery. This France could flourish only if purified of alien foreign elements such as the foreigners and Jews who had been flooding the country for years, end of quote. In the colony, ruling a vast majority of non-French, Frenchness acquired additional tones. For example, it included an inherent duty of civilized and colonized, uh, civilized and colonized, and cleans for their behalf all colonial society from its specific pollutants. In the paper I said before, and you may read an example for an official demonstration of this conception a speech of the French General Marquin addressing a gathering of the Légion Française de Combattants. It, it provides an outlook on the local Vichy visions of Frenchness in the indispensable links between met metropole and colony in which it is the colonizer's duty to lead the way for the colonized, <coughs> not projected on top of the Vichy ideals of work, family, homeland, and the Manchal. However, Beyond visions expressed at public gathering, the French had to convince the local population that the sudden removal of many people from the, the workforce is also done for their benefit. In general, this was not very difficult as most of the purge affected non-Muslims. The official reports describing the, uh, the attack as in regard to local reaction to the implementation of the new policies described a range from a quiet acceptance to an enthusiastic support of suppressing the Jews. The recurring formulae attest to the local administrator's efforts to, ma to match between the new abruptly applied ideologies, the politique indigène, and the role in preserving the natural order of Moroccan society. The administrator's governmentality gave the Muslim an old place under certain conditions in the new order by allocating the Jews a place of even not a uh, complete indigene which enabled, enabled in their colony both the creation of Frenchness and their loyalty to Morocco and Moroccans. In addition to this, the purge was further accepted due to the statement that this step was done in order to clear space for young generation of loyal Moroccan and French job seekers. However, also Muslims were purged. Working through the document regarding the fired Muslim workers, it appears that besides referring to affiliation with outlaw political or sectarian group, communist socialist Freemasons, quite a few purges were rationalized by lack in work ethics or by bad performances at work. In these cases, next to allegations like lethargy in work, or mauvais esprit notoire, a recurring motto describing alcohol consumption, use of gift or visit to prostitutes by the dismissed person is clearly noticed. 
I propose that this accusation acquire a moral sense of cleaning the colonial space for, for the locals using terms which mostly which most apply to them. For example, while citing the prison guard Mohammed bin Abdel Kader, his superior words, a mediocre agent who designed of intemperance, he was, he was surprised on 11 June 42 at the exit of a bar carrying an alcoholic beverage. So it was an explanation why he was, he was fired. We will all be fired. In Morocco, the alcohol is not permitted by Islam. It was yet manufactured and sold by Jews also to many Muslims. As such, punishment for alcohol consumption had a subject of cleaning the Islamic space from pollutants which in this case were both alcohol and the Jews selling it. The purification of society in order to recreate a true France was uh, the essence of the church, the Jew, the Freemason and the communists, as well as the non-efficient workers interfered with Frenchness and in, in the Islamic context, those who lapsed to alcoholism or another immoral behavior were yet another type of contentment. Thus, uh, the purge carried a sense of purifying the entire uh, and diverse colonial sphere. Uh, the adoption of the new discourse was not limited to narrative produced by the administration. It also appears as a major feature in the letters of the individual seeking in, in the reintegration or at least reconsideration of their cases. In many of these, you can see other example, some examples in, in the paper, there are direct declarations referring to Vichy's pronounced ideas of work, family, homeland, the time the leader of French nation, and the bond with the soil. I just want to mention that the soil is, is something very important to the narrative of, of the, the Cologne, which gets another implication in Morocco uh, from the French one. Uh, hence, the tenets of Frenchness advocated by Vichy dominate the administration's rhetoric and those appealing to it with the special nuance of life in the colonies. And after the goal, uh, France Lim took charge in Morocco, Vichy's and right-wing organization were outlawed and the second purge, known as the Epuration Legal, or La Seconde Epuration, had begun. In this act, many of the former functionaries were fired and sometimes also tried and sentenced. The second third tar targeted the whole range for, from simple workers to the top ranks of the protectorate. So I won't get into the, the details of this operation uh, and I'll move directly to some questions and, and the conclusion about this um, uh, data and, and the, the different letters that su were submitted by the, uh, the people that were fired. Um, so um, the set of purges is to be seen within a long range process of, of defining and negotiating Frenchness. The almost obsessed obsession with this issue in modern French history can be related to a, the evolution of its colonial modernity. The urgency of dealing with national identity emerged from holding a worldwide empire which blurred the distinction between colonizer and colonized, both in the metropole and in its colonies. Under this prolonged situation, many French felt as losing their birthright and turned racist and xenophobic, while others sought ways of reconciliation with the growing multi-ethnicity in a context of extended political and economy economic instability. The period under discussion, in the period under discussion, many French governments aimed to rediscover the two fronts which, which might have proposed a cure for many of the national problems. This was supposed to be achieved by an act of deconstruction of unwanted modes and groups, followed by complementary reconstruction through indoctrin indoctrination of an introduction of set of new values which was to define the very type of French identity and spirit. So I just want to, uh, to add a, a few questions about this uh, idea of studying the purge and, and the, 
and the literature with the, the, the way people assert their uh, demands or, or, or the right to get back to their job and to see and, and to study what was the specific, what is the difference between the purges that took place in the metropole and the purges that took place in the colony. So what colonialism or, or, or the pre-war um, ideas and uh, discourses of colonialism contributed to the specific purges and the way people negotiated their identities through the purges. And the second is to see how um, this, uh, what they call government, the governmentality following Foucault, the, the conduct of, of the officials, the way it, it, it had life of itself uh, by, by uh, investigating, policy, surveillance, and so on, the people of, of Morocco, and, what, and how it uh, carried on to um, the post-war Moroccan history. interesting and, and, and very important to, you know, as a reminder that also when looking at Jews to put in this larger context, you know, makes me think I need to revise some, some things that I've written about. Um, but, but I also wanted to ask a little bit more about this, the, the mechanisms of purging, and especially as it might I mean, there's certainly this larger context of purging. You can think about the anti-Jewish laws as purging, and in some ways in the same context as, as um, um, communists and Freemasons and, and so forth. But, uh, but in thinking about the mechanism of, and the legal mechanisms of, of purging, I'm wondering, and, and this is really a, a, a question, um, in terms of Jews being purged, they were the, the mechanism was applying the the dahirs related to Jews specifically. Um, so I'm wondering what kind of legal decrees and so forth. I mean, were there um, were Jews sort of differentiated because they had sort of their own set of decrees? And then you, you mentioned also that there were. Muslim Moroccans who were who were also vic victims of these purges. So, so was the mechanism for them through you know some kinds of dahirs which were separate from the non-Moroccans, and so was the Mahsan then who was also involved. You know, it's what I'm getting at. I'm I'm trying to understand a little bit how, how because I, I think it's it's. It, it's relevant to the question of this larger context or the governmentality and the, you know, because even within these targeted groups, right, there's a, there's a, there's a different hierarchies and operations. So I, I was just very interested to, to know. Um, thank you, Daniel, and also for the, your comment about Pascon in the paper I give an example of, of the father of Paul, uh, well known Paul Pascon, who was turned in the set of Yes, yes, right, the Tourneau, and many of, of the friends. The Tourneau was purged? The Tourneau was uh, was sister. Uh, Tourneau's sister, and, and the Tourneau got, and, and I, I met um, a warning. He wasn't purged, but uh, there were, so, so it's also a, it also relates to this question of mechanism. So regarding mechanism, there was the Daniel, and, and actually, it's paradoxically, the truth, it wasn't a problem. It wasn't a problem. It was very clear what it has been, what they should do with Jews. It took a while from the Daniel to the implementation of, of the purges. It was on June 1940. The Daniel is from June. June, the, the Jewish, yeah. the Jewish, yeah. June 1940, and and they started the purges uh, on October, just in October. So it took a time that the administration 
we write regulations and, and I have all this correspondence about the regulations. Actually, the dar here was later. It was the, it was the French staff. The French staff. But immediately from the French staff, there were orders to implement it in Morocco, even yeah. before the dar. Yeah. And uh, uh, so uh, what, from what I have seen in the documents, um, there were some um, um, police officers that were enthusiastic to, to carry on these um, commands. And uh, there were um, um, enseignement, the intelligence, that there was a report of the intelligence that people told that this and this belonged to the front of the soul. So the problem wasn't with the Jews, because Jews, everybody knows that they were Jewish. But the problem was the, with the, the front maison and the communists. <coughs> and there, they, there was the whole uh, interesting thing of, about the, the um, um, border between um, intelligence and rumors. So they like both rumors and intelligence. And sometimes the sources, the people that, um, I don't know how, how would we would say Lal Shin? The, is, is it the oh, word? No. Denounce. Denounce, denounce. So there was, an all, there was a formal mechanism which the police officer in, in every village town had to report the people uh, belonging to, to Frank Besson or communists. And then there was the, the rumors and, and, and intelligence that uh, denounced people that belong to, to these organizations. So what the, the things that are in the files that are the report, and there was a form of how uh, the police should investigate people about their um, values, ideologies, and it's very interesting to look at this uh, investigation yeah. and to see the logic. So they were referring to previous studies about um, conduct in work, uh, action against the state, and they were very vague. For example, uh, action, uh, actions against the state or against the, the, the government. So it wasn't, uh, there were no specific um, diets or regulations. And for my impression is, um, correct me if I'm wrong, that there was a lot of space for the creativity of the local authority concerning this. So they took a lot of freedom in deciding, but, but formally they had to refer so, so for some kind of, and they could always find a diode that they can refer to. So but there wasn't a specific diode concerning. And, and then there was the French um, a law that uh, Freemason is outlawed and, and the metropolitan, the, the metropolitan laws, interfered directly in this case and, the, um, and the ignored the Moroccan, um, the, even the Sultan, because there were no, there were no dio, specific diets for these people, because they dealt mainly with French. So, it's, so, so the, 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 I guess my, so in theory, but if you were a foreigner, then da here is really... It doesn't concern. Doesn't, concern. Yeah, yeah so, so that's why I sort of wondering about the channel. The channel. Chris, you could be a, a foreign Jewish communist Freemason or something. Yes. Then, you, then, you, then, get, you, then you get the... <laughs> <laughs> but, no, okay. Yeah, so okay. So many the police that took the channel. Yeah, but it seems like that's 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 one of the bigger, you know, it, issues it that... Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Well, I'm really fascinated and interested in interested uh, in the theoretical lens through which you approach this question. So using the purge as a framework to basically you're talking about pathology here, you're talking about medical discourse. And and in your presentation you talked about the Islamic city but also you talked about the nation and how all these things actually fit in this concept of how you go about producing a pure body, pure nation state, pure space. This is just a comment, I don't know if you thought about it, but so because you talked about the colony and then the metropole, so there are different discourses that are coming from different directions, from different backgrounds about what does it mean to be pure here. But also you have a German discourse about the body too. So um, in the literature you looked at, 
I don't know if you've seen some divergence here, or if you've seen differences, or you have all these all these uh, terms that are used to refer to this to this to this framework that you're using are actually similar, or you can actually see some differences between them. Or not. It's just a comment. You don't have to. No, actually, it's it's very important because, and, and, and I think it's it's related to the mechanism. That the effort is pure and who is responsible to purify the space. <coughs> and it's, I have to go deeper into these documents, but the, the, I, I, I can say that there was a specific notion of pure purity for the column, which is very specific in, in the terms and laws the purification and it had a lot of similarity to the idea of, of the, the uh, race, race puri purification in Europe. But um, as, as you uh, suggested before, it was about uh, keeping our um, uh, our colony untouched and, and, and the colony was important more than those sometimes more than this ideology and when the match then you see the, the more cruel behavior of, of the vision. But sometimes they didn't match and then there's a lot of, of arguments about how to implement. Yeah, first there is a question. I have two short questions. Um, first of all, were homosexuals targeted as a specific group for purification or uh, for the purges? And my second question is on the term identity. Did the administration or the victims of administration use the term identity? And if this was not the case, what do you mean by uh, using the concept identity? Okay. Uh, I, I didn't come across um, things related to homosexuality and I think maybe I will. I mean, I studied most, it's, it's immense, I, I mean the document, I don't know if you saw this suffice on, on the post, they're quite new and, and it's also interesting just because they are, they are not new but they're, they're, uh, they're re, they were reorganized in the Archive National. And the, the um, um, Damian Autodes, I, I think Moroccan scholars know, know him, is the one, Autobis, yes, He almost wrote a paper on the Pugasol and the way he filed these files and, and, and all the history of, of the documents and, and so on. So I, I'm just having the whole collection, which is huge. And I didn't go to all of the documents, but I, I studied quite a lot and there was no uh, reference to homosexuality. But sometimes uh, something like uh, he was, um, he's known for uh, his immorality behavior. That might include sexual behavior that was not um, legitimized. But the term homosexual didn't, didn't feel any kind of thing. But it's interesting because I'm sure sexuality was part and, and I see that prostitute was an issue that also is very interesting to the, the um, uh, contamination of, of the space. Uh, and I chose to use the the the, uh, the idea that they didn't use identity. They were just writing, I'm, I'm not Jewish. Um, my grandfather was Jewish, or, or uh, but I'm not Jewish, and I can, I, I can, uh, and they had some translator of recommendation from a priest, or to attest that they were not Jewish, and uh, and they were, so I call it negotiating of identities or contra identities, in, in the very, um, in the very direct way. It is, are you Jewish or not? It, it is, the, this is the, a real political for identities, and it, in these years, it, it is very, um, the, the, the tenses around it are really um, reach a, a peak that I don't know if there's another history which, which, which we can see this kind of, people were, were fighting for their life and, 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 and of course in Europe even more. So I, I, I mean by identity, the, the, the 
how people saw them, themselves as French Moroccans and what are the values that compose being a French, a, a French or Moroccan or Jew or uh, Freemasons or communists. And another thing that we should bear very in mind that the, most of the documents are letters of people that, who, uh, that told or, or tried to get back the, the jobs in the administration, but many people didn't. I mean, Jews, I have some, uh, some letters from Jews, but, but uh, other people accepted because it, it was known that they were Freemasons or communists, so they, they couldn't, uh, or they didn't try even to, to object to the, uh, the purge. Oh, so it's just, so also it's something to think of what, what does it mean? Who, who, are, who are the people that, and why, they uh, wrote petitions, even to the Marashan? And there's something to do with the French, it, it is almost um, cynical, the way that we, you are purged, but you have the right to write a petition, and we demand, even the, 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 some of the administrators demanded from, from the purge to write petitions and letters to the Marashal. This is your right, so the discourse of what is your right, and you, you, they can fire them, kill them, but still they can write a petition, because this is the French law. So it's something to do with how, uh, I was wondering about external factors and one of the complaints of the nationals, the young uh, Moroccan Muslims who went uh, abroad to study was when they came home they couldn't find jobs. And many of them were nationalists. So, and I'm wondering if they brought any pressure to bear uh, on the administration to free up jobs uh, if, if uh, these uh, bureaucratic positions were filled. Do you have any idea who might have taken the place uh, of, of those uh, who were purged? Uh, when it uh, comes to the question of sequestration, which mm -hmm. is closely alive, we, we, we know a lot about the pressure that came from uh, co co colonials of the Colons, who took over uh, Jewish properties, uh, and uh, in fact, very, in some cases, even engineered the sequestration of property um, because they benefited economically. So uh, I, my question is about these you know, possible economic factors job creation mm -hmm. for, for nationalists, for, for native uh, Muslims that might have fallen in the wake of uh, firing uh, you know, all the Jewish employees. Do you have any information on that? Mm -hmm. really, we just maybe we can collect some more questions. Yeah, 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 sure. So, much time. Sure, sure. so uh, Emma, uh, everybody wants <laughs> Sophie. Yeah, so thank you so much for this. It's a wonderful I wanted to come back to a quick sentence you just mentioned in your talk, which was regarding Vichy laws and protecting, in a sense, in its own construction, protecting Muslims and protecting what its conception of Moroccanness was. And you mentioned the case of alcohol. Um, so we don't just have a case here of Frenchness being imposed abroad or how to purify Frenchness, but I'm wondering if you could elaborate a bit more on the Vichy Moroccan administration's understanding of what was pure Moroccan. And then as Jews were classified as indigenous subjects, within this, what was the place of that? Okay, so my question is entirely selfish because <laughs> as everyone may tell already, we have a lot of similarities in our work in terms of thinking through these, these letters and these petitions and these questions of Frenchness and identity and this quest for true France. So my question is, what about performativity, of the performance of identity? How does this play out in what you're looking at? And how do these different people, like I'm not this, but I'm this, I'm not, I'm not one of these bad groups, but maybe I'm still connected somehow, but I don't do anything with them. And I only love France, I only love Bethan. You know, this, this language and this performance of identity, how does this play out? So it's totally selfish that you can actually say no and actually think it for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I had um, two very small things I wanted to ask you about. The first is you know, these movements that you've talked about, these nationalist movements under Vichy, which sort of appeared. Um, so you talked about the Légion uh, Francais Saint Baton, the SOL, the PDF, you talked about the Club of the. Uh, I don't think, sorry? I don't think, 
Yeah, yeah, the LFC, exactly. And these are like fascinating movements that like people that barely even looked at in France, let alone in the colonies, it seems to me. Um, but what's interesting in the, in the little tiny amount that I've noticed in Tunisia is the movement of these people and going around. They, a lot of the members of these organizations weren't necessarily born in Tunis and sort of whatever. But, you know, a lot of them, especially after Lebanon and Syria, what have you, they came to Tunis. And, I, 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 and it seems to me at least that they brought with them some ideas from elsewhere. So I'm wondering to what extent you, you given that you seem to have worked on this a bit more than I have, whether you're noticing anything similar, whether, whether you know what I've noticed is just the one off, or whether, whether some of these actors in these Marachalist, Betanese organizations are sort of, I don't know, in some respects, sort of important players that we haven't given enough credence to so far. So that's my first. And the second point I wanted to ask was, you, you mentioned that the second occupation that you're looking at, you've labelled it legal. Not you, but one, yes. one has labelled it legal. Could you therefore comment perhaps on some of the illegal elements of this? Because of course when we think of the French case of this occupation, we do think about sort of, you know, the shaving of women's head for, heads, for example, which was completely illegal um, and was not at all legal. So in the Moroccan case that you, you said I think you described, can you comment at all on the illegal nature of the Any final question to this? Yeah, I think it was maybe just, uh, it's, it's not really a question, but uh, you know the French since 1912, they were actually trying to seize every every occasion, every opportunity to to regulate this situation, you know, kind of everything can serve the regulation and policy in the society, you know, and the control in the society. And uh, you know when uh, in back in the nineteen twelve and nineteen thirty, the New York was actually kind of purifying the medical uh, sector that I worked uh, on. And he was firing all the, the all the Spanish uh, doctors and all the you know the Portuguese and all the Moroccans who were you know were like protege. And uh, I remember the, his correspondence with uh, with the, chief, the, the the doctor in uh, Marrakech. You know he from the the consul the consul in uh, in he. He wanted to fire two, two nurses, two Moroccan nurses, and uh, and the consul, the French consul, referred to them as as Spanish because they were Spanish protege. And in the same, and then Lyoté was not sure what to do with it. And then when he discovered that they were, they were in one of the beds, he discovered clearly that they were protege, but Moroccan native Jews, Jewish. And then he, he, he changed completely his uh, his tone. He became really anti. You know, he told them, you know, I want them out. You are native. He, not not only native, but also Jewish. In but this is in back in 19 because Lyoté wanted to put only the doctors that he knew, that he knew. I mean, he brought with him from. So here, what I want to do to, to clarify by this case, it's you know the the French. The French interests. Sometimes they don't. They, you know, they, what they want is how to control. They come with it, with some idea, and it doesn't matter if you are Jewish, if you are Muslim, if you, if, you know the interests of the empire. Uh, the primes. Uh, yeah. So, um, so then the question about you now. They were making room for other people and for the pressure coming both from the Moroccan society and, and from the outside. They are evident that yes, of course, the, the new elite or the, the new uh, people were they get the place and there's a, um, a documentation of the, the people that replaced them and. Um, so and, and also uh, I know from not not from the administration but I, I study elsewhere the UCF. So in the business sector, it was much more clear than in this because there are the, some of the people that replaced the the, um, the purge, uh, the one that were purged didn't um, they were uh, not um, 
mentioned in, in, in by names, just by numbers in those documents. So in the business sector, the UCM, for example, uh, intended to to um, take the the, the um, uh, place of the Jews, but at the same time, they couldn't take. Um, uh, the old place, because they, for example, uh, transitor, the the the, um, uh, commute, the people of, of the transport, there were no other people to do it, so they will call them back and ask them to do it. But there were uh, many Muslims. They were they, they um, replace the manager of the company, keeping a Jewish manager at the same time. <coughs> and, and, and this, to relate to your question, it. it Makes sense for Muslims, so this is that is how it should be. When there's a Muslim um, manager and a Jewish employee, even if the Jew was a previous employee of there, but it's a question that I, I need to 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 see more. I, should, I might get more information about it. And um, about the, uh, the, the French understanding of the Shipios or, or, or about what is to protect the Muslim, the Muslims, or, or, or who are the, the real Moroccans, um, so I think it, there was a lot written, written about it. It's the, the, the very known colonial um, uh, protectoral discourse about preserving the old order in order to keep the country at peace. And, 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 and the Jews belong to this order until the war. And then something happened, and there the was a need to, to reorganize those ideas of what is the, the traditional Moroccan society, or the, the Moroccan uh, sociology. And through the project, we can see the, uh, the tension within the administration of allocating the, the right place for the Jews. Not in implementing the, the law, but in the right place in, in the ideology of the protectorate, as, as well to the place of, of other people. So it, then suddenly Islam was, was uh, a subject for the fascist uh, um, officials to, to, to uh, protect Islam or Islamic law against the Jews. Um, one minute. About the performances, I'm not, or the way we think, of course, that there is almost a formulae of how people will uh, perform their selfness in those petitions and letters. And at the same time, it's interesting to see how what they are not and what they are. And even if the reality was the opposite, it still created the idea of what is right and what is wrong, what is to be um, a, a person that belongs to, to, to great ones or not. So. You know the rest we can discuss afterwards.